mini man, mini cam truck. <laughs> it's tender off uh, one of my old locos, and I put the holder for the mini cam on, screwed it down with a bit of plastic card, and just pushed my camera in as such. And there you go, camera on wheels. And get it on the <laughs> track. There you go. Just connect it up to a loco and either pull it to push it. Nice and smooth then for the camera. As you see, I've got all that uh, outer one line done now. I put the red rust on the track and uh, the grime, and it's all looking good now, running fine on there. But, uh, another little tip I wanted to give you here I, uh, you know, I was saying we're having problems with the track, I wait to adjust certain bits. I'll, wait, I'll just switch that off and then uh, I'll try and explain it better. When I'm saying about it, sometimes the track movement and you get, uh, you get them coming off etc. Here's a handy little tool, it's a little tiny spirit level. And you put them on your track and it's amazing how you can see, especially on inclines, you'll find that you've not got your track level. Uh, I found this on this on this bend here, it was still I still had that, I told you I had that bit of a trouble, bit of problem, bother with it. But it was that spirit level, and a bit of plastic card, that's a bit thick is that one, but you can buy it on the sheet, it's worth about £1, £1.50 sheet. We used to do this on level, on uh, points and what have you. Cut, cut a piece of plastic card and you can, you can push them underneath your sleepers. I'm not doing it there now because I say that's okay, but it's amazing. Uh, and then it, of course you can paint it, paint it same colour as what you ballasting is but uh, you can cover up there was a little bit round here I did earlier on you not see it because I cover it over ballast but yeah I put a bit of plastic card under the underneath there and it just brought that track up level there was a bit of a slope on it and it's just on that bend it was causing no a problem but yeah they're ideal them I, I can't remember where I got it I think I got them off Amazon years ago the summit of nothing. This is a, a tiny spirit level. But you're amazed at how your track can go off. That's, that's pretty level, you see, all these are level now, more or less. But that, that was showing quite a slope on it, which is no good, is it? Right.
uh, I was having problems with my blue Pullman. Uh, it was the rear loco, which of course they motorised. Uh, well, it kept blowing the uh, the decoders and a few other problems. I tried a new decoder, I tried all sorts, I had the rewire between the two coaches. Anyway, in the end I gave up. And what I've done is I've <laughs> I took the motor out, I thought well it'll just pull it along and I've got a motor in the front and of course I've got the sound in the front so I should be okay. Anyway, it kept pulling apart on bends and gunners and all what and I couldn't get it quite right. But what I've done now is I cut the body, I cut the chassis out down there and then I fitted a, well it's the uh, the wheels from a DMU, uh, screw that on and then I messed around here put a bit of plastic on, plastic card and a magnet, magnet coupling and of course when it goes on the thing me now and then it's just on a magnetised coupling now but you've seen it running around anyway but I just thought I'd just show you what I've done and I say I've no lights or motor in the back but it pulls it around no problem at all now so I'm quite happy with that I'm going to try and buy a new loco for the rear, but trying to get somebody that's just selling one, you, you can't. And you're talking for a set now, you're talking between four and six hundred pounds, and seven hundred pounds even. As you can see, I've had one or two locos, I've been pulling in bits here. I've got this old uh, Alberta, was up and weren't running again. No, but I've just uh, I've scratched it all up front. I put a bit of matte black on it, don't look right, but it'll run alright anyway. There's no sound with it, I'm not bothered. And then Tornado, which I had a lot of trouble with that. You could, I think a few people did with the axles. I've taken the axles out, I've done all sorts. I get it up as a bad job now. I'm working on this one here. Uh, Duchess of Montrose. Now that runs all right, but I've, it's my sound decoder that's gone now. I'm trying to fix up with a tender from one of my others with a sound on it. Anyway, I'll see you on that later. But I just wanted to show that blue Pullman that's working now. I apologise for the state of the <laughs> worktop. You know, it's like it's that one job and then other and what have you, and you take bits off. And before you know you are, you've got a mess. I'll clear it all up. You've all enjoyed that little session. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a long one again for me, but uh, I tried to show you one or two things there, uh, especially my uh, two Pullman and back on the go. And of course, not levelling the track out is important is that you don't, you don't think about it, you know, only if you're laying on a flat surface, but when you're doing inclines, etc., you do get the track doing a little bit of 
niet laat met de keur van het. Dan zou ik kunnen uh, kost dat problems hè. There's my DP1. Might have the sound enhanced on that one. It wants uh, an OZM2 speakers on it. Right, that's it for this time. I love you and leave you. Uh -huh.